those who cannot hear so well, can you come a little bit closer? Uh, a lot closer. Everybody, please come closer. Thank you. Um. <coughs> So those who are more in the back, can you come closer? Because I think this is what the speaker can do. I, I think there's no more volume. I don't know. Or someone has to help me with the volume. This is what the speaker does. I cannot do more. So if you want to hear more, you have to come closer. Can you hear or no? Okay, good. So the topic uh, of this uh, short satsang is yogis without borders. And uh, yogis without borders means that uh, if you are a yoga teacher or yoga practitioner, um, eventually when we practice, we, we experience, we get some taste of what yoga is, and we actually start to feel that the teachings are true and that, that we are connected and that we are one. So the more we practice that yoga, even if we start for any reason, eventually we feel that it's important to share that with others. So if you're not a yoga teacher yet, many people, if you really go deeper in your practice, there's no way around of becoming a teacher. Eventually you feel that there's some urge that you want to share and then you, you need to become a teacher. And then you, when you start teaching, also you can go deeper in your own practice. <laughs> but the point is that the more you practice that, the more you feel that you want to share. And um, you start to realize that the boundaries are artificial. Like Swami Vishnu Devanath taught. Huh? He, he taught inner peace for outer peace. And he had this urge to share this with all uh, beings on the planet. And with his life, he showed that all boundaries are just mental creations. And for example, he crossed the Berlin Wall and so many places where there were these divisions that our mind creates, showing to humanity that actually we are one, one being. <coughs> and in this little talk to this morning, we just wanted to share um, what we do in Colombia in the place where we live. We did it also the other day in the satsang. But today we continue a little bit and share, share some stories. Uh, just the idea is to, to inspire a little bit. And hopefully, if you have ideas what we can do also, let us know. But the main thing is that mainly the yoga teachers or those who want to be yoga teacher start to think like in a, in a broader sense, not just in terms of I will have my yoga studio, but also how can I bring this teaching to all beings? So. In Colombia, for example, in, in the school, which we have an affiliate center there, Atman Yoga, we are an affiliate center of Shivananda, and um, we started, for example, to teach yoga in the parks, mainly in the botanical garden. We, we told this the other day in the satsang also. So there's this beautiful place in Medellin. Medellin is one of the big cities in Colombia. There are three million people. And at some point we realized that if we just teach the yoga in our area, hardly anyone can practice because the gap between people who can afford that class and others who cannot is so big and only very few people could pay a normal yoga class so some moment we started to teach in the botanical garden this was something like in 2006 or so we started with a peace event there and um, newspaper like helped us uh, and we so often went to this lady in the botanical garden can we teach yoga and like we called her every week and some days she just was, you know, fed up with us. Said, "Yeah, okay, let's. You can do." So she gave us the botanical garden, which is a place which no, normally you have to pay a lot of money to get, but we got it. And then we did that, that event, and so many people showed up, like seven, seven hundred people that day. The newspapers wrote, uh, might be a Colombian exaggeration a little bit, but it was a lot of people. <laughs> and uh, many people practiced yoga together that day, and they came from all places, you know like from the area where we live, which is like a richer kind of people area. And then also more humble people came and we decided to continue that every Sunday. So every Sunday we have yoga class since many years there and hundreds of people come, sometimes 100, 
200 people is 100, <laughs> but sometimes 200, 300, 400, 500 people come. For example, this year we started again, it was so many people. Uh, of course, also we apply uh, a teaching from Krishna Budri. I asked him once, what can we do? He said, always give good food. <laughs> and people come, people are happy if they get food. <laughs> So if we see that the attendance goes down a little bit, then we, we generate an event and we give food. <laughs> and then people come. And the beautiful thing is that people come, you know, with like big cars. And also people come who don't have car, they don't even have sometimes bicycle, you don't know who comes. But everybody practices yoga together and all the boundaries like just drop. You don't know who is next to you. Because also, we do the yoga in, in social challenging places. Uh, the first thing that we apply actually is that all the teachers we commit to our own practice. We have a spiritual diary, everybody. We want everybody who is in, the, in our school teaching like is a good practitioner. That's the main thing so that we're really transmitting the peace to the best of our capacities. Uh, but then also every teacher commits to go to a socially challenging place. Like, let's say, some people go to orphanage place, some people go to uh, prisons. At that moment not, but for many uh, months, years, we did that also. At the moment, we also have an ashram, so we had to like redirect some of the, of the energy. But we went to prisons, to orphanage places, homeless, shelter places, and teaching yoga there once a week. And, you know, we have a group of beautiful teachers and if everybody dedicates one hour a week to do that, many good things happen. And then many of those people also show up in a normal yoga class later. Uh, once Nirmala, she tells this story, often there was this guy, he was in the prison and um, we did also Yokama yoga tours. So we, let's say for one month or so, we travel, let's say, through a certain area and then we go through different villages and then if there's a prison we knock at the door of the prison can we teach a class in the village it's very easy they just look oh yoga what is that yeah for relaxation okay come in <laughs> the, like in the village it's like that in the city it's the opposite in the Medellin it's like more difficult to get in than to get out actually <laughs> I have to do a lot of bureaucracy but in the village it's very easy normally so we go there teach a yoga class and then we give some books for example, we have one book where we share like the teaching about karma, which basically says, uh, whatever you saw, you read. So if you want to read something good, you have to do something good. And then someday there was a guy calling in the yoga school, and then he had this like strong, you know, like uh, the, the, the accent of the streets, of people who like tough guys, you know. And he said, you know, I want to do, go to your yoga class. And okay, nice. And, because I found, I got that book. I, uh, I was in that prison, you know, and uh, then somehow I got that book, um, you know, about this do good and you read good. And I liked it so much, so I stole it. <laughs> 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 so I want to learn. <laughs> so this kind of people also can show up in our classes, also in the botanical garden. Um, in one place, I remember, uh, we went to, in one of those tours, we knocked at the prison door in some village, we could enter, and also some students of us, they come with us. We organized this like a pilgrimage, a Kama Yoga pilgrimage kind of tour. So we practice yoga, and then our yoga students also come to the prison, some adventure <laughs> somehow. And so we entered the prison, and there was a female section, a male section. Nirmala was teaching the female class. And I was supposed, I, was, I did, I was teaching the male class and it was really like, um, I felt like in a kind of a Ben Hur movie because the odd door opens and it's a real, you know, it's like, I'm from, I was born in Germany, but the, Colo I don't know how German prisons are, but I think not like Colombian, <laughs> Colombian prisons are, are really something because it's like in a movie. Yeah? You think that someone guides you into a place, presents you or something, but no, just the door opens, they go in, then the door closes, and then you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, maybe in India could be similar, I don't know, but in Colombia it's like that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Swami, he never visits. <laughs> he never visits. <laughs> maybe now after becoming a yoga teacher, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
would be great. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in that particular place, you know, the door opens. There was one other like teacher with me. We enter, then the close, the doors close. Then you are in this place, just big place. Above is like a, a, a grid, and people with guns <laughs> pointing at you. <gasps> oh my God! <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. Then another like iron door opens, boom, and then big guys come in, <laughs> like with you know a lot of tattoos and tough guys coming in, <gasps> and I like shrinking. <laughs> and there's no yoga mat, it's just like a cement. And then I say, okay, welcome everybody to the yoga class. Please lie down. <laughs> <laughs> lie down, and then everybody lying down somehow. And the beauty, of, I it cannot say, well, like, I don't know, the only thing I can share is it's that yoga is a science. These people, they lie down, they're so tough, you know, and then you start to teach the class, you chant the mantra, you do the, the practice, even headstand with it on the semi, by the way, you can do it. We proved it there. Wow. And um, at the end, when, they, when you see how they start to melt, it's just a miracle. In that particular class, I remember there was only one guy who was not participating. He had stones like this, and then he was throwing stones at other people to disturb. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, oh, could you please kindly <laughs> stop? <laughs> because I was like a little afraid of him. <laughs> but then at the end he stopped and, and he also did something, at least he relaxed. And at the end he came to me and said, you know, I'm here. He said, I, 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 I killed someone. And he was like really in, a, in a, not such a good space, of course. And I will be here for 20 years. And I said, please next time when I come, then do the class. If it's for 20 years, use that time, right? So the point is that, that the yoga is really a miracle. It really transforms the people. It, and also, um, if you teach in the, all these places, you, you see that everybody is just human. And everybody is also, in essence, divine. And there's some, in our, hum, in our human age, there's something which is a little more dark. Something is more light. We all have, we, we have all, we, we are not there to judge. For example, in the prison, we never ask, what did you do? Why are you here? You just teach a yoga class. You forget actually who is there. It's the same experience for everybody. And then when you teach in all these places, you realize that there's like this universal, universal, universality, you say? The suffering is universal. Because also we teach in, in, let's say, in a mall, in a shopping mall, and then very like, we think that they should be happy and they come to the class, it's the same. You see that everybody is here actually in the prison. And then the yoga hack is, is a miracle because it helps you independently if you are rich, if you are poor, in whatever situation you are, you just can feel the effect. And Nirmala sharing a little bit about what we do now in the ashram, we also have an ashram project now and she's going to say some words about that. I was thinking about stories that happened to me with the farmers because I'm, I, I, can, can you hear me? Yes. Like this? Okay. So, Colombian Latin, okay. Uh, so, no, I was thinking about some stories that happened to me in the, in, in the farmers um, because, you know, the ashram has, um, one, one, um, one mountain is one mountain is the, the ashram, but there is another mountain that still some part of the mountain is not of the ashram, and the, there is a farmer who owns the, the land there, who is crucial for, for preserving the, the land, because he has you know the peak of the mountain. If you want to preserve the peak of the mountain, should be jungle, and also you know in the river you know side to side of the river should be jungle. That's the, the, the main thing. Also, when, when there's too, too much uh, hill, it should be jungle. Because if not, uh, disasters happen, erosion and all these So Weimar is the, the, the guy that, uh, actually, he's the son of the, you know, the father uh, owns the, the, the land. And it's very crucial for, for preserving to have him, you know, in, in the yoga symphony. Very important. So, uh, and I wanted to talk to him so much, but he 
very strong, you know. These people have lived a lot of violence, so, so they are tough. So I wanted so much to, to talk to him, and he said, no, if you want to talk to him, you come to me. So I have to climb, you know, at that moment, at that moment I was using to, to walk. Now I go by horse, but it's easy, but at that time I was walking and climbing, you know, like, uh, climb, and then he said, come to, to, to one point, and then I have to climb even more because he was, you know, the top of the top <laughs> <laughs> to go there. Then uh, he came. Finally, we managed that he, he came to, to, to talk to me and uh, the other farmer. And uh, when I saw him, I said, no, this is a lost cause, a lost case because, you know, his face. And uh, I said, no, it's very difficult. So I, if, no, I, I climbed so much, so, so I, I give a try. So I say, wait, but, uh, you know, we are doing a project. Uh, for the, to, to preserve and they, we have a, you know, I, I tried to sell him the, the, the idea of that. And I saw it, no, it was no, no like, like not coming the, the thing. But what I love is that the other farmer is that, you know, he, fuck, he put his hand like this, I say, and he say, he were a man in Spanish, he's like, brother, hey, what she said is true, you have to come together. Uh, we have to, to, to work together. We cannot uh, keep this isolation, everybody by their own side. We have to, ca to come together. So he was uh, trying to convince him. And, you know, and um, one week uh, before coming here, like a little uh, something. But the point is that this guy who was hugging this one, mm -hmm. like two weeks before, he was completely, you know, in his own, he was not open at all. He was the one who was cutting the woods and everything and had the kettles and didn't want to collaborate at all. Then he started doing the yoga and then he was the one who convinced the other, you know. <laughs> that was very nice. Yeah, because the other one was tough. But <laughs> the other was at the beginning, you know, the, uh, some time ago. So it was very, very beautiful to, to, to see that. And uh, he came, uh, I think, five day, days before coming here. He went to, to my house because he, he says, you are crazy, I will not fall. I will not fall is what he said. I will not come into to this yoga thing. No, I will not fall. Uh, no way. You will fall, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> because he, imagine, you know, it's a special culture. Um, we have uh, this culture. Everybody, if you ask in the school, what do you want to become when you are big? All the children will, you know, inquire, inquire. inquire they will say independent. Independent. No, my, I don't want anyone to to be my boss. I want to be independent. This is my land. I do it in my land. You know, like this. This is our culture. I don't know. We are very good at everything, but we don't. You know, we want to be independent. Nobody can, uh, you know, be in top of us. Manipul no, no way. So this is much more in, in our culture. And this guy, Weimar, came to to my house five days before coming here. He came and uh, he said because uh, he. He said, no, I, you know, I will not go to yoga, no way. <laughs> but can I work for you two days in the week? I, because he heard that I need a, a driver for doing something, so I, I can do that. But I will not pass. He said, I will not pass. <laughs> I said, okay, we talk. Uh, so we are in the, in the process. But I thought, okay, I have a point in that. And he's crucial because he has uh, half of the month. So and another story that I told in the morning is uh, um, I told the other Saxon that there was a, a, a really nice soul who came to teach to to train the horses to train the horses to train horses uh, that is very much in our culture you know like Germans love cars in Medellin we love horses you know like everybody wants the horse I don't know it's something crazy so Mikashi knows that he was there with the horses. <laughs> He knows that, much. and um, so you know the great soul. And he makes the, the horses. He was teaching us how to to make the horses like the cats in the in the ashram. You know, like that. <laughs> it's really amazing, amazing this teaching. And he is a uh, you know something great, great soul. And uh, so we were the weekend learning about that and all this. And then you know uh, we are growing food. Uh, what uh, we eat, more of what we eat is uh, growing there in the ashram. And um, you know, the, there is a, a farmer there, a woman, who is uh, very important there, very, uh, an old woman and is, uh, you know, crucial there. 
and uh, you know she she have some cows and she don't want to to you know to what do you say to to fend the, the the cows she wants the cows to be you know everywhere and if you are growing food that's terrible so the cows <laughs> went went to the ashram so the farmers were very very mad and there was a there is a farmer that is my favorite I don't want so much to show that but he's my favorite and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said when he or something like that and he was at the beginning very very resistant he and he's a you know like a chief that came back so he, he went and he was very <laughs> angry and then he managed to, to, to bring him back and you know it's a very nice process to him and um, he had the family had a strong fight with his women you know for the generations you know they say everything so the, the cows were there and they were becoming very angry so I said to him, Alejo, don't be, don't be rude to her. Don't be rude. Be joking. Don't be rude to her. And then he said, Yeah, I know, I know, I know, Cristina. Like with the with the horses. I do with the horses. Like with her. With <laughs> like with the horses. And then we we thought also the love karma before. And then the other one, Oscar, the one that was with me with Weimar up the hill. He said, Yeah, we should. Uh, he was laughing, you know. It was like a joke. But he said. Uh, what we read, we saw. And the other one, uh, the other one said, uh, we have to, to, when something bad comes to us, we have to respond in a, in the, the other way. So it was nice. So it was like a joke thing, but uh, I, I love to hear that. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to tell. So the thing is that uh, we do yoga if we manage that the people, whatever people. Do the practice, and we will see some miracles everywhere. So this teaching, as Swami Vishnu told us, uh, should be everywhere. We need uh, yoga teachers, teachers. We need. We have this mission to propagate this knowledge, not to some people, but to everybody. You know, massive, massive to everybody. Uh, the um, Dalai Lama. He says that uh, if we manage to teach yoga, you know, first thing in the school, we manage to the, the, the kids meditate and do yoga, and then the last thing in the school is to meditate and do yoga. He says in one generation the violence will, will go away. So we have this school, we have that, and we have to propagate it. Every Prayer, the short version.